Hi, we're here at GSI back in the uh, chemical fingerprinting laboratory. We're going to run ASTM D5218 and we could also run ASTM 1603. The difference is a tube furnace versus a muffle furnace. We will do the muffle furnace technique. We're here with the analytic balance. First, what we need to do is verify it. We have a uh, mass of uh, 200 gram or 20 grams and it's right on so the verification of the analytic balance is uh, checked. Uh, we re-zero the uh, device and then the first item would be to measure the pan empty. And this is the pan that's empty. It's been conditioned. Uh, there's no oil on the pan or anything. It's absolutely dry. Then subsequent to that, we'd like a determination of the uh, mass of the sample. And we've added about uh, one gram of the material, uh, the GM membrane, which is cut up into pieces uh, to the pan, and now getting the weight on the analytic balance uh, subsequent to that. We just have come from the uh, analytic balance, weighing the specimens, specimens out. We brought the specimens over in the desiccator. This is the muffle furnace, and the muffle furnace is at uh, 600 plus or minus 5 degrees C. Please uh, be cautious with this. It's extremely high temperatures. You will need two specimens uh, prepared. We have them here in the desiccator. We will take them out of the desiccator. And then subsequently place them at the extremely high temperatures within the uh, the furnace. That's uh, one specimen. And here is the second. We'll then close up the equipment. You note the temperature drop, but now the uh, temperature will come back. It was because we opened up the furnace. We have to wait now for uh, three minutes for the burn. And then after the three minute burn, we'll subsequently take this out and place it in the desiccator for two minutes uh, and let it equilibrate. Uh, the desiccator is there so that it doesn't absorb any moisture. Okay, you can see that uh, smoke is developing here. We do have to turn on the, uh, the uh, fume hood. That's why we have this underneath the fume hood. I didn't want to turn the fan on because of uh, you know, the, the noise that it would generate. But you can see that we would have to close this down and uh, conduct this underneath the fume hood. The uh, vent which is uh, coming here, this is uh, the smoke, is uh, producing a wax. You do, from a safety perspective, have to worry about wax buildup because this is a uh, flammable and uh, you certainly want to uh, limit the hazard of a fire. Uh, here you see the smoke coming off and going up the fume hood um, you know, with the filters involved in this. You do have to uh, wait for three minutes for the burn. Okay, we've waited now for the three minutes of the burn and we have to subsequently retrieve the specimens. Uh, we do that by opening up the fume hood and subsequently opening up the furnace. Uh, the material now, which started out as a uh, membrane, has uh, dis disintegrated to the point where these uh, materials are just powder. Uh, that powder is in a powdered form. We now have to place uh, the specimens in the desiccator and uh, wait two minutes for them to equilibrate as far as temperature is concerned. Close up the fume hood and uh, subsequently close up the desiccator and now wait for two minutes. We uh, prepared other specimens in the past. It'll give you an idea of what this uh, carbon looks like. Please realize that there are two different uh, tests that are run here, uh, multiple furnace and tube furnace. We could also go for ash content, which is a secondary burn of these materials, and it's typically what you do with uh, polyethylene, which has been stabilized with titanium dioxide. So you'll go for a primary and then a secondary burn. We now have to wait for two minutes and then go over to the analytic balance for uh, determining the mass of the sample after the burn. We're here now after the burn, which was three minutes and then subsequently two minutes in the desiccator. We have the uh, two uh, specimens prepared. 
um, you take them out you can see it's uh, powdered now this uh, material is in powdered form uh, you introduce it into the analytic balance and subsequently take the mass from which you can do the calculation. I should point out to you that not everybody uses aluminum pans. Sometimes they use uh, crucibles. We prefer the aluminum pans. Uh, they're disposable. The crucibles are obviously uh, reusable. Okay, this is ASTM uh, 4218 muffle furnace for uh, carbon black determination for GM 13. Thanks for watching.